Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video is going to take a look at the uh, third section of the modular boards, the ocean boards. And um, actually I was shooting this video yesterday and I realized the ocean boards were not straightened. So I did a little straightening on them. Uh, so that was last night and this morning and they're a bigger challenge because of their big uh, because they're big, because they're big, because they're square and with the resin and uh, they can warp in multiple directions. So anyway, got those under control and um, we're going to take a look at them in uh, detail today, show you some of the improvements that I have done with them. If you are new to this project, if you missed the last two videos, um, welcome to the channel and um, I'll put the links to those two videos up here uh, so you can check those out. And um, after we take a look at the ocean boards, we're going to take a look at the board set all laid out so we can show it in a couple uh, variations and you can see um, how they integrate. So let's take a look at the ocean boards and we'll start there. So here you can see a close up of the large uh, straight ocean board. And this was uh, one of the boards I showed primarily in the previous video. Uh, but just a couple uh, changes have happened. Well, a couple. Um, first is that I uh, went back in and actually did quite a bit of extra work on the waves. I really um, wanted to soften them in the back a little bit as well as um, sort of dry them out, if you will, on the top of them, uh, which sounds kind of funny, but I wanted it to not look quite as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, you know, as resined, uh, I guess, basically. So I actually went over and um, yeah, added some, um, uh, blah, 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 uh, some gloss gel uh, from uh, Golden, and I mixed in uh, some white paint and some uh, white ink, I should say, and some uh, frit, and that um, gave it a little bit of nice texture and gave it um, a chance to, for me to continue to work the uh, surface a little bit more. And one of the things I did do, oh, actually, that makes um, a little bit more sense here to, to explain why that almost needed to be hap needed to happen, is that if you recall, um, the previous time I showed this, the surface had quite a bit of pitting in it which I really needed to fix. So after doing one of the other boards, I uh, realized that really just what I needed to do was just give it a heavier um, coat of Envirotex. Well, I'm actually using clear coat, but it's basically the same thing. So I lost some of the definition that was sculpted into the original master, but um, I still retain you know, quite a, a nice uh, wave effect, and I at least was able to clear up that pitting surface. So when I did that, I had another layer of uh, of resin on the backs of these waves, and so um, I had to cover that, and I actually wanted to anyway, um, so that I could build up those layers. And then I subsequently went in and uh, added more of the, you know, the froth, if you will, where the waves have been breaking, and I could add a little more texture to that on top of the resin as well. So uh, overall, um, that change was uh, fairly, you know, amenable to improving the board, if you will. I actually also went in and reworked the uh, splash on the rocks here. And what I did basically is, since I had coated the uh, splashes all with uh, you know the resin when I recoated the board, it gave me the opportunity to leave some under the water uh, and then re-accent some points of it to um, bring those out more so it doesn't look quite, quite as riverish. Um, if you saw my last video when I was talking about the board, I was a little unhappy with how they came out, but I do think this helped to fix it somewhat. Um, and uh, we'll take a look at another uh, board in a second that has some rocks on it, and you'll see um, a little bit different way that I uh, tried to tackle that. Uh, the other thing that changed um, with this particular board is I did go back in and I added um, a little piece of driftwood and I added some seaweed on the shore and I wasn't going to do that. Somebody, one of my viewers mentioned it would look nice and then I was agreeing and I said, well, all right, all right, let's just do it. If we're going to go for it, let's just go for it. So I um, added in those couple pieces of driftwood just to add a little more interest. And then one of the things that I'm, I'm still not entirely sure about, but I really like the look 
is I wanted to put in some, uh, you know, shore grasses, you know, like the kinds of uh, tall grasses that grow on dunes or whatnot. I did go back in. Oh, last video, I said this was uh, for set around the Rhone River. That, that was wrong. It's the Orne River. Anyway, I went and I looked at several sections of coast relatively near the Orne outlet. And uh, this uh, grass was present on uh, some of those beaches. So that gave me sort of the okay in my mind to um, put it on to the boards. This has um, been applied with a static grass applicator. This is 12 millimeter tall grass. Um, I was shocked when I saw it was available and I said, well, let's pick some up. And then I added some other grasses to it. A little tricky because of its height to um, work with it as a static grass. But, um, you know, I really think it came out very well in the end and it really helps add something, again, unique for this board and um, a nice, uh, you know, transition from this uh, verdant area to the sand as well. Now, the caveat with this is that it's tall enough to present some movement issues for miniatures. I thought this might be a risk, but I went with it anyway. We'll take a look here, and this is fixable. So um, if the customer needs me to change it, I can change it, and it would be relatively quick. Um, so we have uh, Sir Tippy McLean, always. And, um, you know, it's because it's not a, a very, you'll see how he tends to, to move towards his poor center of gravity, right? His back is really the, the worst spot for him. Um, it's, it's not entirely miniature stable. I think some miniatures are probably going to be able to sit up on it, um, but depending on, uh, you know, the miniature, well, see, Mr. Tippy, he, he can't even handle this slope because, oh, there we go, because this center of gravity, if you're new to Mr. Tippy, uh, he has some, um, he has some uh, problems. Maybe he was drinking too many potions and uh, lost his uh, balance, but in any case, um, so I wanted them to be tall, to look more realistic, to add that pop to the board. But should the customer be concerned about its overall impact on gaming, I can come back in with some scissors very quickly, trim, 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 bring it down to a more traditional static grass height, and um, I can keep it irregular and, and looking natural. It's not just going to look, you know, shorn by a razor, if you will. Um, so that's my one uh, concern about these grasses. Oh, there we go. So sometimes you can sit up on it, and it depends on where you sit. Another option actually would be for me to stiffen these up. Hmm, I didn't really think about that until just this second. Um, but I was um, applying some sealant to them, and in some areas, it got a little bit, uh, you know, stiff and a little crunchy in a couple spots. Not bad, um, but that might be an option. Mm, all right, I'll let the customer decide on that when he takes a look at the video. Um, so let's take a look at another board real quick before we uh, leave this section. And uh, here you see one of the corner boards. There are uh, two corner boards, a 10 inch board and a 20 inch board included in the set. We'll see them on the table in a few minutes. But um, just to give you another look at um, how the uh, grasses look um, compared to the uh, open area. Oh, that's kind of an interesting shot. And here's a sort of pan view back of what the shore might look like as the waves are approaching. And um, you can see, let's come around over on this side here. We'll take a little bit of a closer look. Um, here's a little bit of a close-up of the waves. Um, I should mention, because <laughs> people will probably ask me, how did you do this? Uh, this was nine different layers of material comprising over 20 steps uh, just for the water effects, um, utilizing uh, three different materials um, that have different, you know, properties. So, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, takes a while, um, but um, I, I like it actually overall. Um, so I really um, feel pretty good about how the backs of the waves came out. Um, I think there's, you know, there's always a little room for tweaking, but um, I felt like it's um, by far the best waves that I've done up to date. And um, you can see the rocks here um, with some of the um, splashes, and I've tried to vary it, you know, no splashes here, no splashes here, a little splash there, because really when waves are breaking over the rocks, uh, they don't break over even the entire rock all at once. A lot of times you'll see a little splash and it'll break off onto the side. And uh, so I tried to vary it up on these um, to give 
it um, a little bit better look, a little less river-like. The other thing that I did, um, actually, and uh, maybe we'll see this when I go to the whole table shot, um, but on the subsequent boards, I pushed up the seaweed up onto the shore much higher than I did on my very first board, so that it would actually be visible in the water um, a lot more, uh, you know, a lot more easily. Uh, and so that was um, uh, a good fix. Uh, you know, I couldn't change it obviously on the first board, um, but I was really pleased about moving it up, and I, I had to figure out a way of judging where to put them because the underlying surface of this ocean board is is varied so that you can get um, you know some of these areas that are brighter and then here you you know you have a little inlet that's darker so it's lifted here so it's a little tricky to know exactly how deep uh, these are going to be so I judged it based on as I was pouring layers at which stage of the layer you know once I poured layer whatever uh, three then I could put the seaweed down and layer four would cover it and I'd have a consistent depth for them so that fixed that um, it wasn't terribly hard to troubleshoot um, and it's a better process than what I was using before so that gives you another look at some of the shore seaweed and uh, I think that gives you a pretty good summary of the ocean boards so um, let's get them out on the table and let's take a look at the set in its entirety so I thought for the uh, first setup, I would just uh, show you what the ocean boards would look like, you know, against the rest of the set here. And um, there are other boards, so I'm going to show you a, another setup in just a second. Um, but uh, you know, here's the um, the split hill. Uh, there's the uh, cave piece and a couple rocks, difficult terrain. Uh, so this gives you a little sense of what they all look like together. Give you a little pan there. Now these are actually sitting, uh, you can see a little edge of it right here. These are sitting on a, whoa, hey, hi. <laughs> these are sitting on a table that I made quite a while ago for Dystopian Wars. Uh, so this table actually has um, a bit of a bow going like this and it has water effects under it. So um, the boards aren't sitting actually perfectly flat so I had to shim some to get them to uh, tile uh, tightly. Uh, but um, Overall, I'm pretty pleased with the tiling. Um, there are a couple spots where the boards are just not quite perfectly square. Now, this was true of my older sets, but I was hoping to improve it a little bit more. But on in the whole, um, the uh, edges are, are pretty tight, so I was overall uh, pleased with that. So, um, without dilly-dallying, let's put another set up, and you can take a look at that. And so here you can see a different arrangement, pulled out the ocean boards, uh, put in the river boards, and the customer also has four additional uh, boards so that he could actually replace the entire river as well. And um, here is the uh, dried earth. Oh, and I should show a close-up of that because I changed the color based on customer request. So we'll take a look at that a little bit closer in a second. And um, you can see the chasm uh, board right there. And um, I put the uh, large hill over here in the corner. Um, so there's quite a bit of variety, so you can have a lot more open space as well. Uh, and um, some of the boards that are not shown are a couple more additional playing boards, which would open up the playing space as well. So let's take a couple closer looks, and we'll wrap it up. So just a, a quick look, uh, a little more up close. Uh, what I did is I, um, whoop, hey, what I did is I uh, gave it um, a heavy wash uh, that was uh, near black with model mates, and then I uh, dry brushed it up using some, uh, what was it? I think it's uh, burnt umber, and then just a, a little strike of a sort of dirty, dirty gray across the top to pick that out. So you can see now how much closer that is to the uh, surrounding uh, areas, and it's, it's got just a slight highlight. Uh, and actually, I was really glad the customer um, asked for that change, because I, I really wasn't happy with the original color. I don't know why I had it on there, if I wasn't happy, but I felt like, mm, you know, I'm not sure. Um, so anyway, I'm much more pleased with this color scheme. Um, and and uh, anyway, that just shows you that change.
So that gives you a look at the uh, set in its entirety. Um, and I should probably answer because people sometimes ask, you know, why am I doing this size board, uh, you know, as opposed to a larger board? But hopefully you could see, uh, I'm pointing over there because that's, that's where they were set up. Uh, hopefully you could see though that um, having the smaller board tile size allows a much, much larger range of arrangements than is possible by, say, having, um, you know, uh, 24 by 24 inch uh, tiles, uh, particularly with features like the river where you can uh, twist and turn it and break it up and have it leave very uh, quite a few areas of the board um, with different layouts. And that's something that isn't really uh, doable under a 24 inch uh, tile size. Saying that, I can do 24 inch tile sizes. I have done them in the past. Um, and, uh, you know, it really comes down to um, personal preference. Uh, and uh, this was sort of how I gravitated towards them uh, from the very beginning. And if you have extra questions about them, I'll tell you what, I'll put a link in the description because I can't do a direct link to it. Actually, maybe I can. If I can do a direct link, I'll put it here. If I can't, um, I'll put it in the description to the um, FAQ and I, uh, for the modular boards. I get a lot of questions about them. And I, uh, quite a while ago, I did up a little FAQ that addresses, you know, what's the material? Why do I choose it? Why do I cut these board sizes? All of that. Um, I haven't looked at it in a while, so hopefully it's up to date. I think so. Uh, anyway, feel free to check that out if you um, have some questions uh, that it might answer. So uh, thank you once again for joining me. Always appreciate it. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed following me along on this journey. Um, of course, questions and comments, I say it every time. Always welcome down below. Uh, I am on uh, Twitter and uh, I also um, am accepting questions for the Q&A. Uh, so feel free if you have something that you'd like me to address in a, more of a long form, uh, long form format. Uh, you know, be happy to uh, send those to me and the uh, email address I think is already in the bottom corner here. So stay tuned. Um, I have a crazy amount, really a crazy amount of videos to shoot and I am going to try to shoot them all rapid fire within the next two days. I probably won't get them out in two days, uh, but uh, expect to see a lot more content coming up really soon. So until then, I will see you again in another Terranscapes video.